We're about to head in for day one of Dragon Con. I'm so excited to see all the great cosplays and hang out at panels, meet lots of geeks. So come on, let's go. Dragon Con is the biggest fan-run convention in the United States. What that means is it's not corporate sponsored. So when you see other cons like San Diego Comic Con, since it's put on by corporate, it's really just there to promote things, to make money. Since this is a fan-run convention, it's by the fans for the fans. We get a say in the types of programming that happens. We get a say in the guests that come. And it's such a spirit here of just camaraderie. When they say it's you and 80,000 of your closest friends, they mean it. I could walk up to somebody right now and say, hey, what did you think of the latest Avengers movie? And we'd probably strike up a conversation for 30 minutes. In 1986, we actually got a group together to meet. And uh, there were about seven of us. And we all wanted a convention that we would attend. At the time, if you wanted to Doctor Who, con you had to go to a Doctor Who convention. If you wanted gaming, you had to go to a gaming convention. Comics, a comic convention. Uh, Star Trek, a Star Trek convention. And you know, you just didn't, didn't leave a whole lot of weekends. And, and you kind of can get Doctor Who'd out over three days. But at any rate, so we thought if we would join all, all those together into one, what we now call a big tent convention, uh, that hey, we could have some fun and it would be a convention just like we would want to attend ourselves. So cosplay could be anything from buying a costume all the way to some cosplayers make everything they wear. And part of it is taking the pride in the things that you make and showing them off. I am a video gamer. I love to game and I look for strong female characters in the games that I play. Laura Croft is a classic. But the new trilogy that came out, they've really evolved her character and turned her into something really strong and a good role model. So I like to be uh, someone little girls can look up to, take pictures with. And I also like to feel strong when I cosplay. I've been going to Dragon Con since I was 13. It was actually my first convention and now I actually make money off of cosplay and I'm able to share my love of costume making and nerd culture with the world and it all is because of Dragon Con so I credit basically the last eight years of my life to Dragon Con. Dragon Con is a place where all of the nerds can get together and everybody can have the most they, they can have a bunch of fun in one place. It's everybody is a is accepted. Every single different niche nerddom thing you can think of is found here at Dragon Con. This is so cool! It's my first time coming to Dragon Con, and so I would say it's 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 crazy, but the people are so nice. It's so fun. It's so, I don't know, welcoming. I, I really like it. It really is a fan show. The fans do this, and the fans, not demand, the fans kind of egg you on. You know, we should do this. We, you know, we should, we're all here on Thursday anyway. You should do programming. And, and so two years ago, we opened a little programming, and holy crap, last night, on the, or Thursday night this year, there must have been eight big events. There was the, the Bunny Hutch, there was the Welcome to Wakanda Party, there was the 8-Bit Ball, there was the book launch, Sherry Kenyon's book launch. I mean, just the wrestling. I mean, it was just, you know, wow. The legend of the chosen cosplay competition is alive. Are you guys liking it so far? Yeah, let's hear it for these contestants. Come on, these girls, guys, work hard. Yeah, we need to clap after each one. Please welcome us, we already did it. Winnie, Sarah, and Mara, and the Sanderson sisters. The Sanderson sisters! Now, if you guys could just sing, I put a spell on you, maybe, no? This is, oh, is it? 
the spell? Okay. John, quit talking to them. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You guys look fantastic. Look here, yeah, in character and everything. You guys. Yeah, we believe in breath men switches. Hell yeah, let's make it look. Ooh. Put a spell on my breath just now. <laughs> by the pool here at the Sheraton Pool area. It's put on by Dragon Con Burlesque and Tallulah Love, who is the host and producer of the show. I've been involved with the Dragon Con Burlesque for three years. This is my third year running, uh, singing and performing in the show. This is my second year emceeing. There's a lot of really fantastic nerd-lesque that happens here at the con. A lot of geek-themed characters, geek-themed numbers, and they merge really well together. It gives us a chance to celebrate the things we love, with a little bit of humor, and a little bit of parody, and a little bit of softness, sweetness, and emotion. We get to have this fantastic party. Uh, we typically do it on Friday nights. We go from 8 to about 10 or 10.30 with a costume contest for the best pinup, fantastic prizes, incredible, incredible patrons that help us put on this event as well. So it's just a ton of fun. The object of the convention uh, for years was to just break even. We didn't, it wasn't about making money. Um, and we used to have some pretty incredible hotel bills here in the city of Atlanta. And we used to spend a lot of money bringing talent in and whatnot. But uh, damn, it was fun, you know? <laughs> We're a little different group. We look funny, we drink a lot, and we make a lot of noise. And uh, we'd always have issues with the hotels as far as, you know, you know, you guys, you need to tone it down and whatnot. And I said, what do I need to do to, to get this straightened down? And, and a guy named uh, George Robinson, who is my CSO with uh, Hilton, he says, got nothing to do, just sell out the show. Sell out the hotel. You sell out the hotel, you don't get any complaints, it's all your people. And uh, that's the way to go. So. Uh, from that day on, it was uh, kind of my goal to sell out a hotel. Sport is officially called bow hurts. We also call it armor fighting, medieval fighting, whatever it gets to the point across the easiest to people. Uh, it does require a lot of dedication, a lot of exercise, conditioning, um, strength training as well, um, and it's very much an endurance sport. We've got full, a full U.S. team that's going to Battle of the Nations every year, which is like the big event of the year for the fighters. I've done that the past two years. They had women from the U.S., from you know, Poland, Russia, all kinds of places, and I was like, I didn't even know this exists, I have to do it. <laughs> women have only been fighting in the sport for five years, I believe, somewhere around that time, and I got into this three years ago. It's getting harder and harder to make it on the team. We have to train really hard just to get a slot because there's so many people who want to be there. I've been coming to Dragon Con for years before I even knew about this. Dragon Con is home. I look forward to coming every year. I keep moving farther and farther away, but I'll always come back. Dragon Con to me means, uh, honestly, it's the most inclusive con that I've seen regarding different fandoms from movies to comics and anime and video games. But, uh, you know, most cons do that nowadays, but Dragon Con really takes it to that level where you just see all kinds of stuff. Like, I saw I Dream of Jeannie walking around last night. I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. The thing most people talk about when they tell me about how much they enjoy Dragon Con was there was so much, there were so many, 
And the talk about the, the scope of DragonCon and the breadth of DragonCon. And one of the things that we've always been proud of is being aware of where fans are and who fans are and what they're looking for and how to make things more interesting on a regular basis. And one of the things is to look at the number of creators that we have coming from less represented communities. Um, and I think that diversity track symbolizes it, but more importantly, shows that it's always been there. It's just a recognition rather than a creation of something. DragonCon has a way of bringing people together from different backgrounds and diverse interests, including the furries. This fandom is an eclectic group of animal characters complete with fantastic handmade costumes called fursuits. This would be Mati Etotono. Etotono is, um, it is uh, Oshiwango, which is from Namibia. That is the Oshiwango word for cheetah. And I support and I've volunteered a little bit for Cheetah Conservation Fund. And they're a fantastic organization. And so that's where the name is from. I bought mine pre-made, so someone else made it, and they sold it to someone else, and I bought it from them. Every, everything is hand-sewn, hand-stitched, made from synthetic fur, and it's about two years old, foam base, so it's nice and squishy, and a nice little hole in my mouth so I can breathe well. That's pretty much it. I'm also a fan of, you know, like science fiction and, and uh, sci-fi literature, and uh, I, you know, I enjoy finding out about film and just trying to keep up. So uh, I'm a Star Wars fan, I'm a Star Trek fan, and uh, so I'm, I'm terrible at video games. I have lousy, re well, you know, this isn't, isn't so good. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've, and just basically the, you know, the ambiance here, 100,000 people and everybody's so chill and they're getting along, it's, it's absolutely great. It's amazing how easy going it is with the huge crowds of people here. Maybe. The reason I think the diversity track is so important is because for so long the nerd community was misunderstood, misrepresented. Uh, and I feel that myself, my opportunity in this position is to not only proclaim how amazing DragonCon is, but how amazing DragonCon is because our attendees are so amazing. Everybody who comes to DragonCon should be able to find something that's just enjoyable. Uh, everybody who comes to Dragon Con should be, feel, should feel that they are part of something greater and they are welcome at Dragon Con. And that is not something the Dragon Con organization does, that's something the Dragon Con attendees do with each other. And that is Dragon Con to me. I've been seven years in a row now to Dragon Con, so I don't see any reason why I wouldn't come back next year. My friends bring me back, like the guests are really nice, but it's always the people that are here. But the Colonial Fleet's a really great bunch of people, and they're mainly who I come back for every year. But the puppetry track is getting bigger and bigger, and I, just, I love the puppetry, and that's really a big draw card for me right now. Courtney uh, said she had heard somebody say, did you see that? That's Pat Henry, let's take a picture. And uh, you know, it's funny, it's funny. People, you know, thank God they don't ask for autographs, I don't have the time. But a picture, a selfie, whatever, yeah, I do that. I mean, these are my people. You know, I read comic books and uh, you know, I read books in school and got in trouble for it. Um, you know, I mean, I love science fiction. Uh, holy cow, Dune, uh, I don't know if you've ever read the book, it's amazing. Uh, stranger in a Strange Land, um, and, and to, to really get to meet some of the writers that come up with this stuff. And I can go to movies and tell people I'm working, you know, go see uh, Ant-Man and Wasp, hey, I'm working, don't bother me. Um, so, I mean, what a deal. We, we have this ability to not only celebrate the big name uh, fandoms, but we also can celebrate the small fandoms, the middleman, the, the dark angel, the the shows that may have lasted only one or two seasons um, that we still love, we still watch all the time. I think the thing I love most about DragonCon is it's a chance for me to see my extended family. And that family stays with me. And, and I get really excited when I know I'm gonna see somebody coming from California, coming from New York, coming from Seattle, that I'm, I'm only gonna see at DragonCon.
The main highlight that many fans look forward to is the Dragon Con Parade. People from all over the world come out to enjoy this free, extravagant event. It means so much more. It's not important what it means to me. It's important what it means to everybody else. Okay. I'm, what do you call, say? I'm a, I'm a trusted servant. Uh, I can I drive the bus, but it isn't about me. It's it's about the fans, and that you could get that answer out there from 80,000 different people, and that would be more important than what I say. Thanks so much for hanging out with me at Dragon Con this year. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, at least until next year. So come back and stay weird.